Peace and abundance, everybody. Welcome back. Tuesday, June 7th, Market Review. MJ the Mastermind here. Um, this is your first time here. We talk about technicals, fundamentals, headlines, earnings, the Fed, economics, you know, everything, everything, everything in between, you know. So tap in with us Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. on Zoom. Catch the recording back on YouTube. You know, feel free to join live, you know, um, follow us on Instagram at the Mastermind Group LLC. Follow me on Instagram at MJ the Mastermind. The link is always in the bio if you want to tap in live. Also join the study hall Discord. Right. Um, yeah. So we got a few things to talk about today. All right. A few things to talk about, but we can't go further without the affirmation of the day. Right. We would be doing ourselves a huge disservice. We didn't start off with the affirmation of the day. Right. So today's affirmation is today will be filled with an abundance of peace, love, and joy. Today will be filled with an abundance of peace, love, and joy. So I hope your day was filled with abundance of peace, love, and joy. You know, that text goes out, you know, every morning, Monday through Friday, you know, um, get that affirmation text. So tap in, uh, you know, make sure you sign up for your daily text affirmations. Great way to start off the morning. If you're not already signed up, text abundance, the word abundance to 877-621-2037. That's 877-621-2037. Great way to start the morning off. All right. So let's talk about these markets, man. You know, market kind of took this target news in stride. But man, we've been hearing a lot of, it's like we've been getting a lot of warning signs over the past, you know, few weeks. And then in addition to the target news, you know, the Atlanta Fed came out, you know, the Atlanta Fed came out and said that, you know, quarter two GDP estimates are now looking at below 1%. So we're looking at 0.9% for GDP estimates for quarter two. The previous estimate was 1.3. All right, so we, you know, when Q1 came out, we saw a huge drop in the quarter, you know, quarter one GDP from what the estimates were. Um, and now we are seeing estimates for Q2 pull back. All right. Um, you know, we still got one more month in Q2, so June. So we'll see once we get these, um, these GDP numbers, the official GDP numbers next, uh, next quarter. All right. But nonetheless, you know, a lot of, you know, um, you know, a lot of news, you know, it's a lot of negativity in the market, right? We've been hearing a lot from institutional investors, Jamie Dimon coming out, Larry Fink coming out, you know, um, GDP pullbacks, um, Apple, no, sorry, not Apple, Microsoft, Snapchat, Target, Walmart, you know, Tesla, right? We've been hearing a lot of bad news lately. A lot of negative news, a lot of, you know, things pointing to a problematic economy. But nonetheless, jobs numbers were still strong, you know, on Friday. All right, jobs numbers were still strong. So that's, a, that's one positive sign, All right? Let me, let me check the fear and greed index real quick before we jump into it. Let's see where we're at. And uh, so we're in fear, we're at a 31. It was definitely a lot lower about a couple of weeks ago when we were trading around, you know, 3,800, right? Um, so it looks like, you know, we made a, a, you know, a nice move back into fear instead of extreme fear, right? We'll see when we get CPI on Friday. Um, CPI might, you know, it might, like I was saying, it might give the market some legs, you know, if we come in a little lower than estimates. Right, but I think that would be short lived. Um, Cause like I've been saying, you know, I think oil breaks out very, very soon. I think oil breaks out and that's gonna put upward pressure, you know, on inflation. Right. So you can see one month ago, we were at extreme fear. We were trading around 16 on the fear and greed index. Right. So still in fear, but not extreme fear as we were a couple of weeks ago. So let's jump into, you know, this market. Let's jump into this rundown, right? Let's see what we got today, man. 
it was interesting, man. Pre-market sell-off, bounce. We bounced with around 40, uh, around 40, 40, 80 on the ES, on the S&P, around 40, 80, which is kind of where we've been bouncing, you know, um, over the last week. But we'll, we'll look at the charts in a second. But, man, we just been trading sideways over the last week, just straight sideways, right? So Dow climbs more than 250 points as U.S. stocks close higher, shaking off Target's profit warning. Right, Target show Target shares fell 2.3 percent. Right, U.S. stocks closed higher Tuesday, picking up steam late afternoon and shaking off early weakness after a profit warning from retailing giant Target reinforced worries over the retail sector. All three major stock benchmarks booked solid gains as the 10-year Treasury yield hovered near 3%. How did stock indexes perform? On Monday, yesterday, the Dow eked out a gain of less than 0.1%, the S&P 500 rose 0.3%, and the NASDAQ gained 0.4%. Right? So a pretty, you know, um, slow day. So what drove the markets today? Stock market ended higher after flipping between gains and losses in the wake of a profit warning from retailer Target Corporation ahead of the opening bell. The market is still trying to digest this tug of war between inflation and the prospect of recession, said Don Calcany, Chief Investment Officer at Mercer Advisors. The shoe has yet to drop with respect to earnings. Target announced on Tuesday morning a plan to reduce its excess inventory and revise lower its operating margin guidance. The plan includes markdowns, canceling orders and removing inventory, along with price hikes to offset higher fuel and transportation costs and supply chain adjustments such as increased holding capacity near U.S. ports. Shares of Target closed 2.3% lower Tuesday and have plunged 42% from their 52-week high um, facts that data show. Disappointing results from Target on May 18th sent stock indexes skidding, highlighting fears that surging inflation was beginning to cut into corporate earnings. Consumer discretionary was the sole sector in the S&P 500 that closed lower Tuesday, with Etsy and Target showing the biggest losses. Several large retailers have delivered mixed earnings and outlooks in the latest quarterly reporting period, pressuring stock prices. Investors are trying to determine whether their results suggest the start of a potential recession or just a shift in consumer spending to services from goods and the economic recovery from the pandemic. All right. Choppy trade in the stock market also came as the yield on the 10 year Treasury note hovered around 3%, a level that seems to make investors jittery. The 10-year yield fell 6.8 basis points Tuesday to 2.969%, according to Dow Jones market data. Meanwhile, May's inflation data, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, will be released Friday. Investors will be watching for potential signs that persistently high inflation may be easing. I think we're on the backside of the pig passing through the python, said David Waddle, Chief Investment Officer um, and Strategist at Waddell & Associates. Some price pressures are starting to cool, he said, adding that he expects the U.S. economy can achieve a soft landing as soaring inflation declines. So for those that don't know, soft landing is basically, you know, you know, the Fed raising rates and contracting the economy without causing a, re a recession. Right. In a paper published Monday, former U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers argued there would be need for Volcker style aggressiveness at the Federal Reserve to tame inflation. Former Fed Chairman Paul Volcker raised interest rates sharply to quell surging inflation with the economy tipping into an early recession in the 1980s. Right. Many are interpreting this finding as implying that the task facing Powell is almost as severe as the task that faced Volcker, that a similar amount of hawkish restraint relative to today's neutral policy setting might be required to do so and that this would almost certainly end in recession, said Krishna Guha, vice chairman at Evercore ISI. Guha said his opinion is that Powell's task is not as difficult as Volcker's in the 1980s. 
Meanwhile, the World Bank sharply downgraded its outlook for the global economy, pointing to Russia's war against Ukraine, the prospect of widespread food shortages and concerns about the potential return of stagflation, a toxic mix of high inflation and sluggish growth unseen for more than four decades. All right, so that's the rundown for today. Let's jump into the global news. SEC's trading shakeup expected to face opposition. The agency's expected changes to U.S. stock trading rules are likely to prompt pushback from the brokerages and market-making firms that handle small investors' orders. World Bank warns of stagflation risk, cuts global growth forecast to 2.9%. In a sharply lower growth forecast for the global economy, the World Bank warned of several years of high inflation and tepid growth reminiscent of the stagflation of the 1970s. So all of this negative news, the market took all of this in stride. The market has been pretty resilient, you know, over the last couple of weeks. Pretty resilient, I must say. U.S. trade deficits shrank in April. The trade gap in goods and services fell 19.1% in April from the prior month to a seasonally adjusted $87.1 billion, retreating from March's record $107.7 billion deficit. The U.S. dollar is looking a bit stretched. Microsoft's warning highlighted the downside of a mighty greenback, but the currency strength looks set to wane. American poised to travel overseas at near pre-COVID levels. Bookings for foreign travel are approaching pre-pandemic levels for many destinations as Americans take long-delayed overseas vacations and COVID-19-related travel restrictions around the world. Um, as uh, restrictions around the world ease. Mm -hmm. Treasury moves to block US investors from buying Russian debt. The US Treasury moved to block US investors from making purchases of Russian debt in secondary markets, an apparent expansion from existing policy that only prohibited purchases of newly issued Russian government debt and some Russian corporate bonds, right? Or Russian corporate debt, sorry. Blackstone, other large private equity firm, turn attention to vast retail market. Some of the biggest firms have created a host of new products aimed at people with $1 million to $5 million in their investable assets. Tariff pause won't solve solar stocks' challenges. Rising borrowing costs and supply shortages remain as obstacles even after a pause in new solar tariffs. Yellen yells, uh, Yellen, <laughs> Yellen tells lawmakers she expects inflation to remain high. The Treasury Secretary is appearing in front of lawmakers as she and the Biden administration face scrutiny over high inflation and how they have addressed it. Um, I, think, I think it was Larry Fink last week that said the same thing. He expects high inflation for years to come, right? I mean, but I think this all started when the Fed delayed you know, uh, tapering and, and delayed the rate hikes, right? Um, you know, they kind of dropped the ball there um, and that kind of probably accelerated inflation in addition to obviously quantitative easing, stimulus checks, you know, all of these different things, a lot of different factors, but at the end of the day, the Fed had an opportunity, you know, um, to get ahead of the ball and, you know, they missed that, right? You know, they dropped the ball there. All right, let's jump into company news. Let's jump into company news. Novavax's COVID-19 vaccine backed by FDA advisors. Experts advising the FDA endorsed Novavax's COVID-19 vaccine, voting overwhelmingly that the shot's benefits outweighed its risk. The agency is expected to next decide on authorizing the shot. Target warns profit to drop because it has too much inventory. The retailer said it will discount or cancel orders for products such as patio furniture and small appliances to more quickly restock shelves with in-demand goods. Okay. UK regulator finds PwC over audits of two construction companies. The Financial Reporting Council um, fined PricewaterhouseCoopers after the UK audit and accounting regulator found issues with the firm's audits of two construction groups. All right, Apple iPhone charging port faces threat of EU ban. Very, very interesting. 
A new EU deal is aimed at setting a common charging standard for mobile phones and other portable electronic devices, potentially hitting the U.S. tech giant in one of its biggest markets. Mm, mm, mm. Coming after Apple. Raytheon moving headquarters to Washington, D.C. area. The aerospace and defense contractor is the latest in the sector to seek proximity to the Pentagon, lawmakers and regulators said. Goodyear recalls tire linked to eight deaths, several dozen injuries. Goodyear said the recall campaign covers 173,000 tires made between 1996 and 2003 and sold for use on motorhomes. The real, real founder, Julie Wainwright, resigns as CEO um, and board chair. Luxury reseller names two executives as interim co-CEO as it starts search for a successor. Netflix BlackRock CEOs among those newly sanctioned by Russia. A handful of prominent American CEOs, including BlackRock's Larry Fink and the bosses at Delta Airlines, Netflix and Universal Pictures have landed on a fresh list of sanctions Russia has imposed in retaliation for economic restrictions the West has rolled out against Moscow. J.M. Smucker warns recent GIF recall will weigh on profit and sales. The outlook came as Smucker said sales for its fiscal fourth quarter ended in April 30th, um, rose 6% to just over $2 billion. All right. So that's the company news for today. Now, let's, um, let's take a look at the sector report real quick. All right, so what we got here? So energy leading the way, healthcare and real estate as well, and then tech. Right? If you look at the one week, energy is leading the way along with basic materials and industrials. Look at the one month, energy is leading the way. Obviously, three month energy, half year and year to date is gonna be energy as well. So. Energy was definitely the pick of the year, um, very much outperforming in back-to-back -back years. Because remember last year, I think energy did close to 40% alone. So back-to-back -back strong years after that, you know, that multi-year breakout, right? multi-year breakout. Um, and I'll show that on the charts. All right, y'all. Um, let's, let's touch on this target news real quick. I mean, we kind of already did. But you know you want to be, um, you know you want to be versatile with the information. You know you want to see what different sources have to say, right? So obviously they expect their margins to be in trouble. Um, they have an inventory problem, um, which means they're probably going to have to lower prices, right? Which eats into the margins, right? Which will eat into revenue and will eat into earnings, right? Um, but the company also reiterated its forecast for sales growth and said margins will look healthier in the back half of the year. So um, they're basically saying this is only a quarter two problem and that things should get better on the back half of the year. So typically when we hear back half, you know, that means third and fourth quarter, right? That's the back half of the year. Um, yeah. I don't think there's anything groundbreaking in this article besides, you know, the regular, you know, the troubles that they're having. So when in inventory is increasing, that means supply is increasing, right? Let's break it down economically. So when inventory is increasing, supply is increasing. What happens when supply increases? Price goes down. Right? Price goes down. A very simple relationship, right? Uh, but oily in the way. Test on the fear and greed index saying right now about 31. Yeah, I think that, you know, I think that does it for the rundown for today. Um, again, the highlight of this week is definitely going to be CPI on Friday. Let's see if they added anything, you know, to the calendar, any speakers. 
Uh, nope. So you get wholesale inventories, revisions tomorrow. Initial jobless claims, continuing jobless claims, real household net worth, real domestic non-financial debt. Thursday, that should be dope. CPI on Friday, big day. Big day and also in addition to the CPI, the consumer sentiment index, right? Very, very important as well. Because we all know consumers is about 70% of the GDP. All right, anybody got anything else to add before we jump into the charts? You see oil rising. Mm -hmm. It has to. It only makes sense. All I want to know, are y'all ready for these eight dollars a gallon? Gas is too damn high. The price of gas is too damn high. No, it's not. What you mean? Nobody says, nobody says when they go into Louis Vuitton and Gucci up. Yo, these pocketbooks is too damn high. Some people do. <laughs> you just, just got to keep that same energy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody says, yo, these Nikes is too damn high. I keep that same energy. Yes, the Nikes is going up, man. Yes, the Nikes is going up. Nah, but I mean, but when it comes to when it comes to retail though, I mean the business controls the prices. When it comes to oil, it's like the economy controls the price. But you know, we already at record high at the pump prices. So, you know, without you know, the, without crude oil or the price of a barrel um, at record highs. A answer me this, since you've been driving or, or paying attention to gas prices, have you seen a dollar fifty? A dollar fifty? Yeah, a dollar fifty. Mm. No, I've never seen a dollar. Okay, okay, all right. Well, when oil crashed and went negative, how low did the gas prices go? That flash crash. I seen 219. I seen 219 in my driving life. Okay. All right. I've definitely seen like 190s. 190. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. what, what, what was it, was that doing 2020? Because oil went negative. You know I wasn't doing 20. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying, oil went negative. So how come the prices didn't collapse? Right. I, I just want to know. I just want to know. Because those gas stations like, got to pay money, man. So, like, in 09, how low was the prices? Mm -hmm. I want to say, like, $250, $3. Like, oh, cheap okay. like that. Okay. I wasn't okay. driving. I wasn't driving. I don't driving. even think $3. I think it was, like, two-something. My point is this. I don't hear nobody on this call talking about that. I was bread was back to five cents. Right. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I say, damn, these Nikes high as hell. Yes, I do. It's a fact. It's a fact. Price Again, huh. all I'm saying is, listen, the reason we complain about gas prices is because it's going up a little too fast and yeah. our money ain't going up quickly from the W-2s. I, I know some of y'all killing it in the market, but Yo. that's all, the, that's all it is. It's funny, you know gas is high when people start talking to you about how high gas is. <laughs> yeah. When people yeah. like everyday conversation, like, yo, gas is high. But, but guess what though? I was at the Wawa, and it's still packed. Yo, is it me or Wawa gas is sus? Man, it probably is. I don't know. I just Wawa had to gas. No, no, MJ, MJ. <laughs> Wawa Listen. gas is going fast, yo. Yo, that's what I just said. I filled up on Sunday, and it normally take me to, like, Thursday. Why the hell it was, like, Tuesday, and I was on, like, a third, well, a quarter of a tank. Yo, I'm trying to tell you. So I got see, air in a gas. I don't know what's see, going on. So now you're talking about a, sci a science experiment. You I've know, been to the gas station three times in the last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I hope it's not to fill up. Cause <laughs> yo, the Crazy, work truck, bro. the work truck was a buck fifty. Hundred fifty dollars. Yes, to fill it up. Hundred fifty dollars. Mind you, it, it used to be like eighty nine, ninety dollars. So we now, we now, we now using we we spend the Honda lease payments every time to fill up. Yeah, it's crazy out there, man. Man, I feel, and again, for my we premium about this, oh man, I feel man. The premium, oh man, you, woo, you premium. Shh, listen, you gonna you gonna need a bonus to pay for that. It's bad, man. I told y'all the other day I was at the pump. I looked at my phone and I looked back up. It was already at like forty dollars. 30 40 dollars, man. It's crazy out here. You preaching to the choir, MJ. I'm telling you, I paid off, I paid premium for premium gas, and it like disappeared in like two days. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm about to stop going a while. I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go to um what's the other one? Luke Oil or something. Let me see what's going on out here. Let's see what's going on. They might be finessing us. <laughs> you can't even use Luke Oil. It's, I think they got a band in New Jersey. Now you know what you got. You, you got to use the Synergy Gas. Synergy Gas. I forgot. I think that's Exxon. That's Exxon. They gas be lasting longer. Mm. I'm gonna let y'all know my results of my experiment. Um, Please keep keep us abreast. Yeah, man. I mean, imagine when crude oil gets the record high. And we get the hundred fifty dollars a barrel. Like you say, you might see eight dollars. I think, um, you know, in different parts of the. I think. I mean, California has the highest. I think they're around like seven dollars plus right now for regular. Yeah, actually, plaid is definitely coming soon. Plaid is definitely coming soon for sure. What do you mean that that, 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 that EV is not gonna save you neither? Because guess what? It's this thing called supply and demand. Oh, y'all all want to switch to electricity? Well, guess what? Yo, the grid is getting getting pushed to, you know, unheard levels. So we got to raise prices. Raise prices on what? Electricity? Yes. Ain't Tesla supercharging stations free? Nothing is free. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is free. Actually, ain't the charging stations free, though? For real, for real? I think so, right? I might be wrong. I think that's the business model, though. Oh, they're not free anymore? Oh, man. Well, either way, they're really cheap. Electricity is pretty cheap. When I rented a Tesla, I think I only, like, when I filled up from, like, like 2% all the way to 100 I think it was only, like, $3, $4. Like, for a full charge. So it's not that bad. I mean, it's definitely, you're definitely saving, saving money with the EV than a... So so hold on, hold on. When it when it's eight dollars, when it's eight dollars, you gonna be complaining? What gas? No, 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 no. When it's eight dollars to fill up your Tesla, when it was four dollars before, then now it's eight dollars. And then when they go to eight dollars, it's sixteen dollars. Like you are not seeing the, the jumps by hundred mm. percent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I guess, you know, that's a huge jump. Um, but I wonder if it's different if you charge it at home. I wonder if it's different if you charge it at home. Yeah, I mean, you want to charge off, off peak times, which is probably around 9 p.m. to 5 yeah. a.m. So Exactly, exactly. And you definitely want to get a level two charger because that level one that you charging super duper slow. Yeah, for sure. It's really, you definitely need a supercharger. But again, we, we talked about this. Y'all listen. They're trying to make y'all go and run and get these EVs. Like, run. And I ain't just talking on Tesla. I'm talking about everybody. Like, yeah. you know what it's going to be? I can't afford to spend no money on gas. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> but I'm going to let you get to these charts. Shout, these shout out all the people. <laughs> Shout out all the people that work from home. They like, well, don't bother me. <laughs> well, they gotta go. They gotta hold up. Okay, you they work still from gotta home. go places. That's true, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, 
listen, it's all good. You order stuff offline, don't you? Oh, you Amazon Prime. So you're like, oh man, I got free shipping. I'm good. Oh, then what, 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 what happened? You paid like $45 last week for that. Hold on, you bought it again next month. It's $60. Oh my God, you bought it again at $75? Hmm. Then did you, you saw that increase? Like, come on now. What, what, the streets is watching. Better pay attention. Streets is watching. Blocks keep popping. Waiting for you to break to make your first mistake. Can't ignore it. And oh man, it get better though. Buy now, pay later on gas. I'm gonna leave that yeah, way. We talked about that yesterday, dude. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yield my time. I'm gonna let you go handle these charts. Oh, people gonna get caught up in these fees and these interest payments. Don't get caught up, y'all. Don't fall into the trap. Unless you're buying something that you know for sure that you could, um, you know, pay off uh, really fast. Um, but yeah, that buy now, pay later, man. That's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. All right, so we're looking at Target. You know, we pull back inside this demand here. You know, uh, resistance turning into support. Yeah. Around 153, 155. Um, huge drop <clears throat> out of the symmetrical triangle here. And yeah, I mean, we trading down here. We'll see, uh, we close at 155.98. Pretty resilient, you know, pre-market sell-off and then a strong bounce back, you know, market took this in stride. I guess probably because they said, you know, everything will be fine by the second half of the year. But that remains to be seen, man, because if oil keeps rising, oh, baby. Man, this 120 supply is strong, though. This 120 supply is very, very strong. Um, having a hard time breaking but i think we eventually get there we eventually get there um, let's take a look at the vix real quick man this is a strong move is brewing all right so the vix we trade in low we, we broke the 61.8 um from the previous um from the previous low um so it'll be interesting to see how we close this week I would not be surprised if we, you know, CPI comes out lower than expected and then, you know, the market bounces um, and continues up. I would not be surprised because the market is um, and pretty resilient, right? But nonetheless, I'm still bearish. I'm still bearish right now. Uh, you know, today's price action is very, very bullish right now. So it looks like we could be forming a... Um, you know, uh, ascending triangle here on this move up, but we'll see, right? We're kind of like, if y'all can see, we're kind of like stuck in this, this weird area where we're trading in between supply and demand right now. And we're trading in between supply and demand, right? So price is very much squeezing here. And that's why I said, you know, we'll find out soon. This is the daily, we'll find out soon if this is accumulation or if this is distribution. They're very, very volatile in between these two, um, between 4,100 and 4,200 pretty much for the last week. If we zoom into a four hour, right? As you can see, we came back up, tested this, you know, this key level from yesterday's 4,165 area. Today, we tested this three hour, three hour supply here. Right, you can see we got the supply zone that was created here. Boom. Nice right, supply. We came up, tested that, kind of pulling back, um, pulling back over the last hour. Right. Um, from 4, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., we kind of pulled back. Um, you look as you could just look at the four hour chart, <clears throat> the three hour. Even look at the four hour, you can see we, we keep squeezing, we cross, and then we cross back. Been very, very, you know, uh, tricky over these last few weeks. Last few weeks, um, I'm still bearish, uh, but I'm, I, you know, I might get out before CPI. I might, you know, I might see because uh, the way it's looking, 
I think we can see a strong move. Uh, let's see if we do clear 4200. Let's throw a fib on it real quick. Uh, and remember, we're testing this 38.2 fib here, All right? Which is at 4190. Which is at 4190. Um, now, this is it's like this is it's a lot of conflicting, a lot of things conflicting right now on the technicals, right? Because on one hand, <clears throat> on one hand, we have this trend line, right? We have this trend line that we broke, right? We broke, came back up, retested it, right? But then, you know, buyers are holding this level pretty strong, right? Buyers are not letting us hold below 4,100 for that long, right? And then in addition to that, we had a four-hour three candle, right? Four-hour bullish engulfing three candle, which is usually a huge bullish sign. But then we come back up, test supply and the key level, right? So this is very, very tricky price action. This is the time you kind of want to be patient. Kind of want to be patient until the market decides what it wants to do, right? Um, but if we do break out, um, we'll probably go to 4,300. You know, we have some supply here. 4,300, we'll probably test that supply. That would probably be, uh, what would that put us? 13%. Um, we could even possibly make a move to the 618. We could even possibly make a move to the 618 um, if CPI comes out favorably, test the 200 day, and then that'll set us up. I don't think we go higher than that though. I don't think we make a strong, I don't think we go too much higher than that. I think that's just a bull trap, right? That will set us up with a very nice bear flag, right? Very nice bear flag. Um, because there's, there's no real reason for the market to just run, you know, for the rest of the year, right? But if we do, right, if we do, now, if you guys remember, I talked about the corrective wave patterns, right? So let me, let me, let me, uh, let me show y'all this, right? All right, so we talked about the AB, um, the ABC pattern, right? The corrective wave. Right, so when you do, so we zoom out, right? What if, you know, we initially thought this was probably the corrective wave pattern? Right. A, B, right? Right, and then C, right? But what if we zoom out and that's not really the corrective wave pattern. What if that's just the corrective wave pattern inside of the corrective wave pattern? What if, sort of like what we saw with the head and shoulders, um, and then we ended up seeing a bigger head and shoulders, right? So what if this is the corrective wave pattern, right? What if that's A, come back up to the 61A, that's B, and then that sets us up for an even bigger drop for C, right? Down to like 34, 32. It's just a, uh, just, this is just a theory, right? This is just a theory. Um, so just something to keep in mind, right? That corrective wave pattern that we saw previously might just be within the corrective wave pattern that we may start to find here. Um, so we could possibly make a move back to 4,400 before we set up an even stronger move down. Right? It's all probability, y'all. Any you know anything can happen. It's all probability based, right? Um, but I think you know I'm still staying strong that we'll see 3,900. Um, but I'm less confident today based on how bulls reacted um, to the news and to this key level, All right? Um, strong move. Let's look at the NASDAQ. Let's see if we got a cross on that daily. And we're still squeezing. Ooh, we did get a cross on the daily on the NASDAQ, didn't we? So we did get a bullish cross here on the EMAs. 
um, on the NASDAQ today. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, and that's why I'm saying, you know, I originally said this could be a rally based drop, but the way the week is going, it's possible, you know, I think my probability has shifted a little bit that we could see a rally based rally, rally based rally. But that remains to be seen. So we just got to pay attention. CPI, CPI will probably give us direction. Um, but at the same time, we got the Fed meeting next week. So we might, you know, we might get a small pop, but then kind of trade sideways until the Fed meeting. And then we got triple witching next week as well. So next week is going to be um, a really volatile week. Really volatile week, to say the least. Go ahead, Aki. Okay, so... <clears throat> we got some some distribution, right? But we made a lower low this week. I mean today, right? Yeah, but look at the response from buyers. Okay, okay, they they, they stepped in, right? But what did they really do though? They still within the last the, the day before candles range, and it didn't form a three on the day if it was that aggressive. Yeah. So I'm 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 just of the mindset that because we get one day up, like I mean, basically it's just ranging, right? And then I mean, we're, well, we're in, we're about to be in the middle of summer. Uh, we still got CPI data coming out Friday, so like they're still trying to figure it out. I guess they, you know, still think the Fed playing games, right? And but oil is 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 running up, so. The pressure is about to get real. Yeah, it is. That's why I think any any move, that's why I'm saying like any move to the upside, I think will be artificial. Like I don't think it'll it'll hold or last. I think it'll be artificial. Um, I mean, isn't the market based on earnings? For sure. Okay, and so they say, yo, our margins is going lower. So. Question: Can, Couldn't these rallies up just be short covering? Yeah, could just be bear market. It's just typical bear market rally. Yeah, which is them buying in, buying to exit their position. Mm -hmm. And take, again, take profit off the table probably take some profit off the table in, you know, pretty much waiting for that CPI data and the Fed, which right. is causing the, which is causing the basin period. Yep. Um, and then, you know, you can look at the, we on a weekly, you're looking at the 90 EMA, so it's acting as resistance right now, 4160. 90 EMA is trading at around 4160. Um, we came up, we came up today to that level, right? Um, we kind of bounced off that to the penny. So if I were to put a key level, 4160, which is not too far uh, off the, you know, uh, the level we made yesterday off the daily open from a couple of days ago. Let's do 4160. Let's make it light blue. All right. So look at that, you know, look at this rejection here from yesterday. All right. So we got a one hour supply that we tested today in addition to that three hour supply. Um, so, you know, this is very, very choppy, uh, very, very choppy price action here. Uh, we go to the 15 minute. Let's see, look at this. Look at that candle off that 4160. All right, look at that. Look at that rejection. So we'll see, man. Very, very sloppy or, um, we're just trading in a range right now. Just trading in a range. I think we'll continue to trade in, to trade in that range, probably until we get CPI on Friday, right? And um, don't be surprised if the market jumps on a lower than expected um, CPI core CPI. Um, but I think it'll be artificial. I think it'll be artificial. I don't think it'll last. I don't think it'll hold. But don't take my word for it. You know, do your own research. Do your own due diligence. Again, 
120 is the magic number for crude oil. It's going to have to hold. It's a lot of supply. It's a lot of supply up there. Uh, going to have to continue to cut through that supply. Fix. I mean, the head and shoulders is still valid on the weekly. I mean, not the head and shoulders, the cup and handle is still valid on the weekly. Um, if we can close above the 61.8, uh, I think that'll set it up better for a breakout. But if we continue to trade lower, you know, the probability of that move definitely drops. Right? Definitely drops. Um, 61.8 would have been a nice area where it would bounce. Um, but you know, if we continue to trade lower, um, you know, that kind of, you know, um, spoils that. I mean, but at the same time, um, I mean, I guess it technically still could be a double bottom if we bottom here, come back bottom here. But, you know, I was looking forward to that cup and handle breakout from the 61.8. Uh, but we might, we might end up closing the week above 25. So the VIX today closed at 24. Uh, so we're sub 25 as of now. Go ahead, Aki. I mean, just looking at the chart, it took, it was a balance where we had, oh no, you just, you just you go, go back on. to where you were at. Oh. I'm okay. just trying to throw another fib on here. Oh, okay. So we had the uh, initial drop where we had one, two, three, four candles. Then we bounced from that demand zone up one, two, three, four candles, right? Nice balance. And now we're in one, two, three, four, five, six candles, right, of, of playing games, trying to figure out, you know, what, what we about to do. Like, this looks bullish to me because if there was, if it was just this massive upside, right, mm -hmm. the downside candles would be moving a lot quicker. But we six weeks in trying to cover four, four up candles. Like, yeah. <sighs> And the week isn't over yet. So we have this 61.8, but just be patient. And the crazy part is there hasn't really been any good news. <laughs> like that's the thing that's like crazy to me is that the market is up, you know, 10 over 10% 10 from the lows. But they're really, only thing that's been coming out is bad news. You know, Microsoft, Tesla, you know, Snapchat, you know, quarter two GDP revisions is lower. You know, uh, I mean, I guess employment numbers was good news, but, you know, um, there's been nothing but a slew of bad news. You know, companies slowing hiring, getting rid of some employees, margins, retail margins are contracting, right? It's just a slew of bad news, but the market is like, ah, we don't care. Um, the market's like, the market's just shaking it off um, as if it doesn't matter. I think the market's main concern right now is the Fed funds rate. Let's take a look at, you know, the future for that. The market's been pretty resilient, I must say. Um, but at the end of the day, I, like Aki just said, you know, earnings drives prices. So when earnings estimates start getting lowered, right? Right. Um, when earnings estimates start getting lower, then what happens? Right? That's going to have a negative effect on price. It's going to have a negative effect on price. Ooh, ooh, Apple year over year growth for this quarter, negative 12% estimates on Zach's. Ooh, ooh, 1% growth on the revenue. Mm. 82.4 billion um, for the quarter. Negative EPS growth. Oh man. Oh man. Let me see if I can. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's look at. See if we can get the history here. EPS surprise. 
So obviously they haven't missed in the last, you know, four, four or five years. Um, yeah, surprise. Let's see if I can get that. So this is gonna, I'm really looking forward to Apple. Let's see, times, dates, and announcements. not what I'm looking for but yeah um well negative negative 12 percent let's see if I can let's see if I can bring up see if we got some revisions uh, over the last couple of weeks um forward estimate jumps to inflation come back to that at another time but nonetheless um, Zach's has negative 12 percent EPS growth year over year for the current quarter for Apple um, that's very very interesting and that's the that's, that's on the earning side uh, sales up one percent uh, oh here we go this is what I was looking for the trend this is what I was looking for all right, so seven days ago, so 60 days ago was a dollar 24. 90 day, days ago was a dollar 24. So we have seen earnings estimates drop. Now we're looking at a dollar 14. Um, very, very interesting. Uh, and that would be quarter ending reported a dollar 30. So if we go, let's go to macro trends real quick. That would be, let's see how that, how low that would be in comparison, you know, um, so the historic numbers. So if we go back, that'll be their lowest. If they do come out, um, in line with this this uh zach's estimate which is about a dollar 14 that'll be their lowest since the pandemic since 2020 their lowest quarter since the 20 since 2020 um like i said negative growth you know um, last year was a dollar 30. So let's see if we got something here from Microsoft. Now keep in mind though, usually the market when they talk about earnings estimates, they usually use Refinitiv, um, but I don't pay for Refinitiv. So we're gonna use Zacks today. Uh, so Microsoft, not that much. Of a, of a pullback in terms of earnings estimates, right? Um, current at $2.32, 90 days ago, we're at $2.35. EPS year over year, looking at about 7% growth. Revenue looking at about 14% growth. So right now I'm just checking the heavy hitters to see if, you know, some of these earnings estimates have changed. Um, wow, look at Amazon. Looking at current 14 cents, 60 days ago, 59 cents. Uh, well, I, it's probably due to, is that due to the, I don't know if the split has an effect on that. I take that with a grain of salt. So we got Facebook, we got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. Let's look at Tesla. You know, Tesla did have to shut down factories in China due to the lockdown. So that could affect production. Um, 30 days ago, 2031 cents. 
2013 now, uh, but the 90 days ago, 2012 since. Let's check Google. And I think, you know, once we get closer to earnings season, which is about a month from now, you'll, you'll start to see these earnings estimates, you know, um, shift a little bit more. Yeah, Google 90 days ago was $28. Now I'm looking at $26.55. Let's look at Facebook. $2.86 60 days ago, 90 days ago, looking at $2.59 now. Let's look at NVIDIA. Dollar $35, $1.34. $1.34 30 days ago, $1.27 now. So we're starting to see this. I think, you know, over the next couple of weeks, we might see this, the, you know, these earnings um, estimates drop a little bit. What would cause CPI to be lower than expected? Um, you know, it's just an estimate. So it's just based on the estimate. So, um, just prices. Price is not, you know, as high as, you know, the market expects them to be over the past month. It's, um, you know, CPI is just a basket, the average price of a basket of goods. So, you know, the price of those goods just not being high, um, not being as high as the market expects, right? Um, Mikey says interest rate hikes squeezing demand, which would lead to price drops which would aid in lower inflation. Right? Yeah, and then also, you know, lower demand. But at the same time, when we got consumer spending numbers, consumer spending was up. So I um, can't say is a lack of demand because consumers have still been spending. Go ahead, Aki. Just for everybody on the call. What have, has any one of your friends said or your family members are your, your, your six degrees of separation, right? So six layers out. <clears throat> Has anyone said, you know what? I'm not about to be spending all my money. I'm not about to go on vacation. You know, gas up some. I'm about to, like, have they started saying they're about to cut back? Because if they haven't, then, you know, CPI is going to be high for the next couple of months. They can complain about gas, but they're still going to the gas station. They can complain about high prices at Walmart's, Targets, uh, ShopRites, Costco's, Publix, you know, but they still going to buy the goods and services. So until you start hearing, yeah, I'm cutting back, then expect those numbers to be higher. I feel like everybody and their mom going on a trip this summer. Everybody been locked up in the crib you know, pandemic, you know, um, you know, a lot of people have been staying in the house because of the pandemic. I think, you know, a lot of people going to be traveling, you know, this summer. It's going to be a huge surge in demand. You know, airlines are raising their guidance, you know, so travel, but travel you, is definitely booming. But, but, okay, here's the counter to that, though. Them layoffs. If there's rumblings in the company, right, that's gonna drop the poison pill on, on people spending money, right? Because if if I know, yo, I may be laid off, then yeah, immediately locked down, boom, nobody's spending nothing. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But and, and, and then look, 10% cuts here, 10% cuts here, you know, it might not mean much to somebody that's not being in that situation, but as soon as you like get in that situation, people go on survival mode, right? Now, it's a balancing act between the Fed and the companies, but you know, the way, way Jerome Powell was talking, like, yeah, you know, we could go to 6% or a little high, high force. It's already green light. 6% on and the Fed? No, 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 no. 
on the unemployment rate. Sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> Un- unemployment rate. <laughs> I was about to so, say, when he say that? <laughs> no, unemployment rate. High, high fours, maybe six. Again, this is when they started with the Wall Street Journal. So that's the green light for the companies to be like, oh, we going to survive a move too. So, you know, we need this free cash flow to survive whatever recession or whatever's coming. So now that's a small number, but it can still send like a ripple effect. So imagine, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. My bad. I was like, imagine, you know, a 10% cut from a certain company in majority, let's say, 85% 85% of that 10% people that are getting cut live in a certain county or a certain area of state. That's going to be a hit, you know, to, to that state's economy. thousand percent. So when we talk about a recession, right, technically a recession is two quarters in a row with negative growth. Negative, negative year over year growth. Right. Um, So right now, technically, I mean, technically, we're not in a recession right now. I know some people are like, well, we're already in the recession. You know, by definition, technically, we're not, right? Um, and, 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 and employment is still strong. You know, shout out to my homie Quill. He, was, he sent me some information yesterday. Like, technically, you know, recessions really don't happen if the unemployment rate is below 4%. So that's another thing we got to think about. And the, you know, the jobs market is really, really strong right now. But like you said, if those layoffs, which I think, you know, Tesla has said it, you know, Robin Hood a couple of few weeks ago was letting people go. Um, I think we'll start to see that over the next few weeks. Um, and I think that'll start to get us in recession territory, right? Um, but as these GDP, you know, we're seeing global GDP, Revisions drop. Um, like I said, the Atlanta Fed came out today, lowered their quarter two GDP expectations. So, what was quarter one? What was Q one? I forget. Wasn't it one point something? What was Q? What was Q one GDP? Negative one point five. I think. Yes. yes. Real GDP decreased at an annual rate of 1.5% in the first quarter of 2022. Right? So if we do get a negative, yeah, yeah, negative 1.5. So if we do get another negative quarter, this quarter, then, te- then we're in a recession. Because by definition, you know, a recession is two consecutive quarters with negative growth. Then technically we're in a recession. So, I mean, we only got a couple more weeks until the quarter is up. So we could very much soon, you know, um, you know, the GDP number gets released by the borough um, on June 29th. Let me share my screen. On June 29th, that's when we get the next, you know, GDP number. Um, so, oh man, we might get there. We might, we actually might be in a recession after this quarter. Um, so we get that, we get that data in, um, in three weeks, get that data in three weeks. It's going to be interesting. Stack your money, you know, get ready, you know, save up. When these real estate, when these home prices crash and everything comes down, you know, it's going to be very nice to take advantage um, of these, you know, these home prices coming down. Obviously, stock prices is down, right? Um, But you definitely want to have cash on the side. I can't wait till that that number comes out. Wow, this is a packed week. I mean, this is a packed month. This is a really packed month, y'all. We got CPI tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow, Friday. We got quadruple witching next week. We got the Fed meeting next week. We got GDP numbers at the end of the month. 
Yeah, so these next three weeks is going to be kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. And you think the market going up? Hmm. I think artificially, I think artificially we can move up because, um, you know, you know, we get, oh, CPI comes in, what, I think the estimate is 5.9 for CPI. Um, for core, I keep referencing core. So core estimate is 5.9. Um, CPI headline is 8.2, right? So if we come in, if core comes in lower um, than 5.9, let's say 5.8, 5.7, I think the market could get a you know artificial move to the upside on the short term. Nice little bull trap, bull trap. Nice little bear flag, and then you know, as we hear from the Fed the following week, um, as we get um, witching. The following week, you know, I think we can come back down to reality. But what do I know? I'm just a guy that reads and, you know, trades and has an opinion, right? We all have our opinions. And that's why I always tell everybody, do your own research, do your own due diligence. I've been right before. I've been wrong before, just like every other trader, you know. So, you know, keep learning, keep doing your research, keep studying. Really looking forward to CPI on Friday at 8.30. If you're in any trades, you might want to set some stops, you know, uh, but it's not like your stops is going to do anything pre-market anyway, right? But nonetheless, you still want to have some type of risk mitigation in place because we might get a huge swing. Aki, you got anything else to add before we wrap it up? Yeah, um, so we had talked about ET uh, a couple of weeks back. Well, I think it was last week. Energy transfer, we saw an age base on the quarterly. I just want to let everyone know it's up. It was up today, uh, twelve thirty. So, mm -hmm. if you if you was looking at that, you know, I'm ha I'm happy it was uh, had a good trade, and you know, it's, it's progressing in the right direction. Because as we talked about, and MJ also we continue talking about, because oil is definitely going to rally. That's, that's not if, and, and, I, and that's on me. That's just my own personal belief. It's not if, it is. It's going to rally. Because I will say it again. Where is the European Union going to get 2.2 million barrels of oil per day that they can no longer buy from Russia? Right. So you can answer that question for me on your all time highs. Yeah, basic economics. Basic economics, y'all. Supply of shock, increased demand. Basic economics. Price goes up. That's like economics one on one. Right. Um, and we got a cup of handle on ET too. Um, in addition to that, that yearly A space. Yeah. All right, y'all. Um, hope y'all learned something today. Hope y'all got some value. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. Um, tomorrow, I think we got Neo. Let me, let me make sure. Tomorrow we got, I think we got Neo tomorrow. Oh, sorry, no, Neo's Thursday pre-market. Um, tomorrow, we got five below after market. A few other companies. But Neo's Thursday pre market and DocuSign is Thursday after market. And then, as far as the economic calendar goes, tomorrow we just got wholesale inventories revisions. Right? All right, y'all. Hope everybody has a great night. Have a great evening. You know, stay blessed, stay elevated, keep your energy high. And I'll uh, see y'all tomorrow. Peace and abundance. Peace and abundance.